Welcome to the Create Today podcast. This show is all about how to create the life that you want just one day at a time. And my guests today are Ariel and Adela Gonzalez, and they own Arrive Financial Services. They're amazing. They've been in business for a really long time. So they're going to tell us how to get our finances right so we can create the future that we want. Yes. Right? Yes. 100%. Yes. Especially with everything going nuts right now. I mean. It's scary. Yeah, yes. it is. Oh, and is. they've helped us a lot. We're not sure what to do with cash. What do you do with your assets? What assets are safe? What, yeah. you know, there's so much uncertainty, it's so sure. unsure. And so they're going to teach us a lot, but we're going to start with the story about how they got together because they've also <laughs> been married. 25 years. 25 years. That's just incredible. You guys, you should really write well, a book. I'm an angel, so <laughs> I that's, make it easy. That's the secret. That's, that's the secret. Oh. I am, you know, just. Oh, that's the book. Oh, you don't need to write a book <laughs> now. All right, guys, My just, job, be <laughs> just be an angel. Just be an angel. Then you have a perfect marriage forever and ever and ever. Because it's yeah. easy. Easy. No so problem. easy. <laughs> um, I'm curious, did you ever get to a point in your relationship where you almost split up? Yeah. How many times do you want to know that? I can, really? Like more than a handful for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, for, for the very beginning. I mean, we were both young, right? So of course. I two, was 19. She was 20. Yeah. So, so you she robbed the cradle. <laughs> Two kids trying to figure things out, yeah. you know, and you have a having, lot of... Ha and having millions of different people with influence, right. influencing Our the marriage. relationship. Right. And they were all telling you, exactly. oh, yeah, a yeah. no-go, no-go. Yes. He's that, she's yes. bad, he's bad. Gosh. What are you doing? What are, you know, and... and uh, that it affected our marriage. It, it affected our decision-making, how we you know, processed our relationship, how we communicated with one another, and then um, we did split. We were actually apart for a good year. So yeah, we, we, we were apart. He lived in Bakersfield. I was in Oxnard, and we had decided to part ways. We had two children at the time, yeah. and so it was like a come-to-Jesus moment, mm. you know, in a so relationship. Selfish, you know, I can't take it <laughs> Yeah, of course, exactly you guys. I'm kidding. What it was. I'm kidding. Okay, don't don't be yeah. like, wow, this guy's no. <laughs> yeah. So it was a come to Jesus moment, um, and and literally, literally speaking, we literally decided to come to Jesus, really, mm. and and decide to have Christ as our center point in our marriage, beautiful, and not have the influence of everybody else. It was like, okay, what does God believe a marriage should be, and how should a husband mm. and a wife treat each other? Well, and then we both agreed, like, okay, look. We're the ones living together. Right. We're the ones that have the kids together. Let's just cut everybody out. Yeah. And if we're going to make decisions on how we're supposed to be, then let's just do it together and yeah. we'll see how it goes. And that's basically how we raised our kids, how we did everything. And so all of everything from that point on was, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a process. It, was it wasn't, it was it, way it, better. It evolved. Right. Every, you know, year as time went on, it just continuously got better. It wasn't yeah. perfect, but. Of course not. Yeah. But it got better uh, once we figured that out just to cut everybody else out. Yeah. Well, I think if there's any young people listening that it's very, people don't like the, oh, marriage is hard work. Like, yeah. oh, it's just work. It's just work. It's not yeah. just work, right. but it is work. It is you work. have to work on your you communication skills yeah. mm -hmm. big time. Yep. Uh, what else? You have to work on your own personal development. Absolutely. And your relationship with a, a higher power. Yes. That will definitely yeah. help you. Well, you know, everybody, and, and you know this, everybody comes to a relationship with their own baggage. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're trying to handle your own stuff and then have to deal with somebody else's stuff. Yeah. And that was know, a big I mean, turning point too, because we did take a marriage class, right? And so mm. that was one of, it was called I marriage. And so he was exactly that, is that we have a laundry basket and I tend to dump my, my, all of my mm -hmm. desires and wants on the other person mm -hmm. and not realizing that it's the personal development within myself. Mm -hmm. I, I can't rely on him to make me happy. I have to make myself happy. And in turn, my portion of the relationship is better because I'm not relying on him to make me happy and vice versa. So that's where that we've doesn't always mean been... though that you shouldn't try to make the other person happy. Right. Of course. I think when people hear that, they're like, well, as long as I know all my words, I, I don't care what, no, you do like, Yes, you want that guy or girl to make you happy, but you, yes, she's right. You have to be happy with yourself. Right. But yeah, of course, you're married to that person. You you want them to 
course. Baby. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We just see a lot of friends that did go through divorce yeah. and then they got healthy. Then they decided to like, yeah. you know, oh, I'm going to do this. And it's like, why? You should have done that during together. your relationship together. Like you would have been so much of a better dynamic together if you just worked on it. Yeah, we've had some friends, you know, that, that did get divorced and they were, man, they were actually really, really great, great couples. couples. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, you know, they decided to fix themselves after they, the divorce was done. And I'm like, man, that's probably something probably should have been done while could you were still married. Could have done. Yeah. And you could have stayed together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's understandable. I mean, not yep. all relationships, but it's okay. I mean, it's just yep. like, that's what we kind of establish in our relationship on how, you know, we were going to trust ourselves to kind of personally develop ourselves and not rely on each other to make the w one person happy. But yeah, we do, you know, I mean, if you figure 25 years, we've been together longer than we were with our parents. That's true. <laughs> that's nuts. And I'm only going to be 45 in June. So <laughs> that's the majority of my life already. It is. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Well, it's an inspiration to me. And yeah. so I love one of the reasons why I love being around you. Thank you. Um, really inspire me. And um, you have a beautiful relationship and yeah. a gorgeous family. And I love the family dynamic. You're all so close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even through the rocky issues and the, the, mm -hmm. the hard stuff, you're never yeah. gonna, not going to have hard stuff. 100%. And we've been there. I mean, yeah, we've yeah. Been I been there. think even as we were going through our, our, our well, actually, once we, you know, we decided to figure stuff out ourselves. Uh, I think one of the commonalities that we've always had is that we wanted our family to, to grow up close. Yes. Yeah. Like that was just something that we agreed upon right away. It was just mm -hmm. like, I want my kids to, to be able, when we're not here to be able to, you know, to rely on, on each, each other, other rely yeah. on each other, have each other's backs. Right. Cause you know, you, you know, there's, there's enough people in this world that are going against you. You don't need your family to be against you as well. Right. So hard. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. It was, that's the way I've always told my kids, like you guys need to have each other's backs because at some point you're going to need each other. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah. you've done that. You've created yeah. that. And it's yeah. beautiful and you should be proud of yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You have amazing <laughs> kids. Yeah. No, it's been good. <laughs> um, so when you started Arrive, you didn't start. It wasn't well, called Arrive. What well, did you? Can I tell you how we met? Oh, <laughs> yes. You gotta, I almost forgot. Because it's such a great this story. Because date us a little bit. It's and so, so great. For some of you guys are going to be like, I remember those evenings. It was like <laughs> one of those evenings where it was a Friday night and I wanted to go get the new video as it was released before everybody else got off of work. And of course, if you know what I'm talking about, it's Blockbuster Video. <laughs> That's right. So, Some people will not know what that is. I know. It's, 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 so it's back in the day, kids. Back in the day. That's exactly what We couldn't what just is. stream it. You Remember had to go when? to the store and beat somebody to get your video. Yeah, an actual video. And then you had yes. to bring it home and you yeah. had to be there first. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a thing. Yeah, it was. It was a thing. It was called Blockbuster. Uh, video. Block, no, yeah. Blockbuster. Yeah. What was it called? Blockbuster Nights. Or, or let's, have, let's go make it a Blockbuster Oh, night. yeah. Right? That was a thing. So I was the cashier at Blockbuster Video in Ventura, California, or Oxnard, California. Mm -hmm. It was on Oxnard, Ventura Road yeah. in Oxnard, California. And she had just gotten back from Vegas or something. Yeah, it was a Sunday night. I was like, I'm going to make it a Blockbuster night. <laughs> and I was out partying before my shift, just so you know. Of course. Right? I was, and it was right across the street where my buddy lived. So I was partying hard before I walked over, put my blue t-shirt, my blue polo on and my khakis. <laughs> yellow name tag. With my yellow name tag. And, and, you know, they threw me at the cashier. So I was like, oh, let me make this happen. <laughs> so I'm at the cashier and Adela walks up. And she's like, hey, I need to, you know, here's my videos. And she goes, hey, I like your name. My name's Ariel, right? Little Mermaid. And she's a big Little Mermaid yeah, fan. it's my big, favorite movie. Right, favorite movie. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we started just, you know, I started flirting with her a little bit, you know. And, and uh, I don't even know what movies you're in. You I don't even remember, to be honest with you. Three or four yeah. of them. It was a nice little stack. <laughs> so I ring her up, check her out, and then, you know, back then you had to, like, put it around the security bars yes. that were there, to, you know. But did she have any late fees? No late fees. You know what? I didn't what? even check. I was a good, I was a good She would rewind. There rewind was no rewind them. fees either because all the videos were rewound when she brought them back. So there was none of that either. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And so I put the videos around the sensor, and as I put them on the counter for her to take them and leave, I pull them back, and I'm yes. like, wait a minute. I'll give you my, I'll give you your videos after you give me your number. Yeah. Ooh. And I was like, seriously. Come on, dude. Like, how many times have you used this? Like, this is, I can't believe I'm actually going to do this. I was, And I told him, I straight up, straight out told him. I was like, 
how many times do you do this? Because this is like, I would just want my No, no, no. She says, you probably do this a lot. And then what did I say? He's like, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I do. And I was like, wow. I was going to say, you did use that a lot. <laughs> yeah, he did. And I was like, I well, still was like, I, and I remember writing my number on the counter and on the little po uh, piece of paper he gave me. And I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm doing this. This is stupid. And I was like, here you go. You know, you're probably not going to call me. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Give me my movies. <laughs> you know? But I thought he was a good looking guy. And I obviously loved Ariel, you know, so I was like, ooh, you know, <laughs> but yeah. So then he waited the three days to call me. Yeah. And so the, rule the rule book, book. the rule pull, book, they, if, for you, if you guys don't know, they pull you out in high school and they put you <laughs> to the side and they give you the rule book. I, I don't know if they do that anymore. Maybe that's what the issues are. <laughs> No, yeah. I think one of my favorite things about John is that he never received a copy of that rule, rule book. He didn't even know what they were. Didn't even know there was a book. Mm. And uh, so it was only the special kids that got yeah, the rule book. That's what I loved about him. He had no game. Just I asked me it. out right well, away. John is game. <laughs> he just has no like, clue. Like the dude is game. Like you look at John, you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, that is game. He's right not. There. It's all <laughs> fake. It's all a persona. <laughs> He's like, gave me 5,000 ways to say no. And then, okay, well, do you want, then right after I said yes to go to the Cardinals game, he immediately texted me, oh, okay, well, even if it doesn't work out, we just end up being friends. Would you, I have tickets to Fleetwood Aww. Mac two days later. Wow. So he's already asking me out on a second date before we even gone on the first date. And he's just like, smart man. I yeah. tell everybody, dude, if somebody likes you, they're going to fill up your calendar. They want to yeah. spend time with you, period. They yeah. don't play games. See, that's the closer it. in them because what he you do is you close at the next appointment before the first appointment <laughs> right? is done. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> he made it. Brilliant. That's yeah, awesome. Really so it was a strat. What out. you're saying, it was a strategy, a strategy all yeah, along. That's what I mean, John is game. <laughs> yeah. He's so good that you didn't even realize <laughs> you had game. Yeah. <laughs> He already closed the second appointment. Yeah. He was yeah, done. He was yeah. closed the whole, he shut the whole deal <laughs> yeah. down. I love it. One love text, it. two texts. Two yeah. texts and it was done. Yep. Yeah. Good for John. Yep. Yeah. Stud. All right. So yeah. three days later. Three days later. Yeah. We went on a date. We went to go movie, movie and dinner and like. We you went kind of out to a movie? More. Yeah, we, we went and saw The Saint that I do remember. The Kilmer. Saint with Val I Kilmer. love that yeah. movie. Yeah. Cool I've seen it 10 movie. times. And then, um, yeah, I, I still remember picking him up. Um, kind yeah, of, I, did, I actually didn't have you a didn't car. Have, oh, no, you had a car. I had a car. Yeah, you had your oh. car. She had a nice, nice, really nice car. And so oh. she was like, oh, no, 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 I'll pick you up. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm driving in your piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think I had an El Camino or it something. It was an El Camino. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. best. Those guys don't know it's half car, half truck. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty badass. Yeah, fifty so, years ago. Uh, yeah, six months later. I mean, we just kind of started hanging out more and more together. Yeah. So here, here's here's what happened. Here's the guy's version of what went down. <laughs> I got her, literally got her number and 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 put it on the pile that I had of a bunch of other of all numbers. the other girls that he's and, asked. You know, flipping through cycles. You know, whatever. I put that. I put her number there. And, and as we would hang out slowly by, I would, you know, I, I would just find myself wanting to hang out with her a little bit more, hang out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'd be throwing the other numbers away. Mm -hmm. And that's really this true story and how I kind of was like, well, she's kind of cool just to kind of hang out with. And you know, I'd really rather spend my time with yeah, her. I would rather spend I, my that's time with her. That's how it goes. And, you know, I dated a lot. So I was kind of, I, I was able to see through the weeds pretty good. And yeah. So, yeah. You were yeah. very mature. Already had tons of life experience at age 19. Oh, yeah. well, believe it or oh, not, yeah. I actually did. He was around the block. That's, yeah. a, that's another a podcast. <laughs> that's yeah. another podcast. I'm just going to interview him. Yes. Yeah, let's talk about your first 19 years, buddy. Maybe yeah. more. Disney version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what everybody really wants to know. Was, oh, yeah. Oh, totally. So good. Why, thinking back, why do you think you had so much pushback from your families? We were young. We were young. Was, I think that's just the because scene. they didn't want you to get together so young. We yeah. were young. You know how it is. When you, I mean, I'm I'm this way with my kids. When you know something's going to be hard, mm -hmm. or isn't the proper way to do things, or it's just going to be a long road and it's going to be a hard road. Like you don't want to see your son or daughter go through that, mm -hmm. right? right? And so I think a lot of it was their influence was in a way to where it wasn't supposed to be. It wasn't supposed to make it hard on us. So I don't think they really realized right. that they were, and both of our families, yeah. mm. I don't think they really realized that they were making it harder. I think they were more thinking that they were trying to guide. Yes. Trying to protect Doing you. In a, loving protect way, in a so loving way. But, you know, they, it really was just hard. Yeah. Did you rush into it? Um, the wedding? 
the every, everything. Everyone, like we were together. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, we dated uh, six months, and by the end of the year, we were married. So wow. yeah, it was it was I guess a shotgun wedding. Yeah, yeah. and then a baby the next year, and wow. a wedding, and trying to appease family. You know, even with the wedding aspect, that was a whole ordeal too. I bet. Um, so we have two weddings. We have a court wedding and a church wedding really? we tend to celebrate the court wedding <laughs> well because it was a catholic wedding and i wasn't catholic and so oh. and to be honest with you i didn't understand half of what was going on yeah which and then now i look at a simple christian wedding and i'm oh, like did I hear something? that would have been great if i would have just had that kind of wedding like i understood what the whole point of it was but there was so much tradition and i, I didn't i was raised that way so i didn't really understand what was going on yeah. mm. and so i did i that day i felt kind of like okay well um all right, I guess I'm married. <laughs> wow. I don't understand anything yeah. what you guys just said. No, yeah. Yeah, but just yeah. kind of go through it. So you please family, you know. And yeah. we did that because of family. Yeah, it was yeah. all family. You know, mm-hmm. it was like, you know, we joke like it was their wedding. It wasn't really our wedding because it was nothing we would have wanted. But, you know, you just, just kind of go it. with do it. So we celebrate our court wedding because that's when we really, you know. Decided. So here's a couple of stories about our wedding before we <laughs> move forward. And I don't want to take up all this time, but you have to know these stories. <laughs> One is, is uh, we had a limo driver that's going to take us to the beach because we got married to Ventura. Yeah. We were, it was, she was going to take us to the beach so we could take pictures. The limo driver's like, yo, I got to go. Uh, I got another, another appointment. I got to go. Yeah. And so she bails. Yeah. Adele and I are there. Taking pictures. Thank God my grandma is there <laughs> and another person and maybe a couple other people. So we jump in my grandma's Dodge Neon afterwards <laughs> with her big old dress on. <laughs> And if you know a Dodge Neon, it's like a little egg. Yeah. Smallest Small, car right? ever. So we're driving back and people are like, what happened? We're like, the limo driver left us. Right? <laughs> yeah. So that was one scenario. You know, when, when a couple gets married, they have their dance, their first dance as their a couple. Song. And they get to pick out their song. Well, one is we went to the DJ and he's like, oh, I don't have that song. I, I tried to call At him. the wedding, yeah, at he the didn't wedding. think about, right? So he says, I don't have that song. And then we're like scrambling at the last minute. To find through CDs. Find, right? Going through CDs because <laughs> that's the way you did it back then. So we're going through all these CDs and we finally find one that we agree on. And we're like, all right, let's just, let's just roll with this one. Let's get it done. People are like, everybody's they were like, waiting in, in for anticipation. us to do our dance. Oh my yes. gosh. So it's like, come upstairs, up to the stage. You need to select your song. And we're yeah. like, what do you mean you don't have our song? <laughs> so we finally go, we get it selected. The dude gets it loaded. We go down to the yeah. dance floor. We start to go as a couple and we're getting our first song going. <laughs> and then it's like, rip, 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 rip. <laughs> the CD is scratched. It keeps on, <laughs> blip, 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 oh, you know, yeah. going. And we couldn't even finish the song because it never played again. Everybody was staring at you. Everybody yeah. staring at us. It was awesome. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what song that was? It was Celine Dion. Um... Oh my gosh! I mean, it was neither one of our favorites. Yeah, it was a Celine Dion song. If I heard it, I'd remember it. But hysterical. Yeah. Yeah, but it was the CD was scrapped, and we should have known. Right, we got the DJ. We got the DJ from the swap meet, so it probably was. It's like a hundred bucks. (laughs) But you know what? You're on a budget. You're like, let's let's roll. Let's figure this thing out. Yeah. So. Yeah. So um, I think they always say, you know, all those different kind of hiccups throughout kind of makes the marriage last longer because you, you know, kind of have to get some Mm -hmm. tough skin through that. Yeah, you do. And then you have have some things to laugh about later. Yes. It's only funny later. Yeah, it was was only funny later. It wasn't funny at that time. Probably was not. I was pretty hot when... Yeah. So needless to say, when we we did our 25 years, uh, we got to our 25 years, you know, he had wanted to get remarried and I just had like... I didn't have an enjoyment during my first like mm. wedding experience. I was like, I don't want to relive that. Like mm. that was not fun for me. I don't want to do that again. I'm okay. Just he and I. So we went to Paris. Mm. So that was city of love. So it was romantic. So cool. Yeah, so. And you loved it, right? <laughs> it oh amazing. my gosh. It was yeah, amazing. It was... Aside from it being cold, but it was just absolutely It was beautiful. like, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up that way. And so my, my, my uh, vacations were like in the back of a trick of a pickup driving 10 hours somewhere. Same. Right. That was my vacation. So, and, you know, and it was okay, whatever. I had an amazing childhood, but mm-hmm. uh, when you go and you actually see like the Eiffel tower and, and Paris and you're like, man, this was like in, in books. Mm-hmm. I'd never thought I'd be able to go and, and actually see it in real life mm-hmm. and go on top of the Eiffel tower and have champagne to celebrate our anniversary. Like it's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool. That was probably the biggest thing for me. I'm like, Holy cow, this is real. Yep. Only <laughs> seen it on movies. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's so amazing. Cool. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go back yeah. in a long time. 
I love it. Okay. So at the time, had you already started your career? In, so, were you yeah, in nursing school? I was school? in nursing. I yeah. had, I, when I met, so that's why we ended up in Vegas, was a celebration because I had just gotten, finished my school, oh. surgical tech school, and I got my first job at a hospital. So my parents took me to Vegas to celebrate. She worked in labor and delivery. So awesome. I was in labor and delivery. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was great. It was great. So I was a surgical nurse for 20 years. Wow. Yeah. She's very studious and I'm not. <laughs> I'm not either. She's very like. She's yeah. Really Whatever she, you do, don't call your college and ask for your transcript because you'd be really depressed <laughs> if you're anything like me. Really? Yeah, I did that a couple of years ago. I don't know why, but I was like, whoa, I was a lot worse than I thought I was. Really? It was like a 1.6. Wow. Wow. But you passed, so. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> I dropped out. I dropped out. I'm a dropout. I can't deal. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. No, so, well, what were you doing? I mean, Blockbuster seems like a great career path. So, believe it or not, I was the same, <laughs> so I was going to ITT Tech, which is not even in business anymore. Oh, that's right. So I went to ITT Tech, worked on Blockbuster Video, and I and I worked at a place called August, like the month August mm-hmm. Accessory, selling women's hats. <laughs> <laughs> I did. How many hats do you do in a month? Oh my well, gosh! They used to sell a boatload of hats. Really? For ladies. It was a big yeah. hat, la- big hat market in Ventura. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With the beach market. I mean, there the were some sun. ladies that would come in oh. and buy boxes for, and we'd have to box them up and ship them out. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. I'm so, not a hat person, so what do I know? Yeah, August Accessories. It was cool. I mean, it was a great place uh, to go and, and cool and make extra cash while I was, you know, a student. And learning people skills, sales and I didn't skills. Ir- ITT Tech either. So nah. Drop out times two. <laughs> But you went into sales, like sales has, has one been, been always a thing for you. Yeah, I went into sales. I did gym membership sales, worked at 24 mm-hmm. Hour Fitness, did pretty good. Um, but, you know, it was different back then, and I needed to make more of a paycheck. And mm-hmm. so at that point, we had moved to Bakersfield, California. And so I actually did factory work. I mean, mm-hmm. I was probably making like, back then, I was probably making like 50 grand a year, working rotating shifts, 12-hour days, overnights, mm-hmm. mornings, uh, you know, weekends. What was the factory? Uh, we used to make roof and shingles roof and for shingles. a living. So uh, yeah. uh, the fiberglass would go in, they'd be covered with asphalt, and the granules would fall on the, with the different colors and different blends would fall on the, on, the, on the asphalt with the fiberglass, and it would go through, and then it would get chopped up by the machine, and then it would get packaged, and it would get palletized, and we'd have to unload with the forklift. Mm-hmm. Travel all across the country for, with, you know, with yeah. all those trains and stuff. But Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, was, it was, I mean, it took care of the family, though. Right. And, and yeah. uh, there were some times where we had the kids – and it was just us two because nobody moved to Bakersfield to kind of help us out with the daycare. And so she was gone to work. And, uh, you know, my, we only had the two at that point. And so when I would get home, we'd basically high five. If I got off the evening shift, mm-hmm. I'd get off at 7 in the morning. Whereas I was about 15 minutes from the house. We'd, I'd high five Adele on the way out. Mm-hmm. I would I would do because I hadn't slept, right, all mm-hmm. night. I was working 12-hour shift. <laughs> you have to sleep at some point. in the kid's bedroom. I would lock the door to the front. I would lock the door to their bedroom. I would put on the DVD and their little Mickey Mouse TV that they had. I'd put on a DVD and the kids would sit there and play as I would knock out of my son's bed. Yes. And then they would wake me up and say, hey, dad, we're hungry. Okay, I'd stagger to the kitchen, make them something, make them something to eat, and then put them back in the room, lock the door. And then till oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, and my gosh. Oh, my gosh. work that night. Yeah, you have to sleep. You go crazy. Yeah. I think he did that what five years about five, five years, years. Yeah. Wow. but they always told him like he was he shouldn't have been there like, like he, bro you don't belong here you're yeah. different and i'm like well i appreciate that but i'm here yeah <laughs> interesting yeah, yeah. Mm. so he always had that x factor everywhere he worked even mm-hmm. in the gyms everywhere and he had that desire that entrepreneurship mm-hmm. desire and stuff and mm-hmm. so i think it did play a big role in the shift i think working in a factory though what it did for me is it really pushed me to like all right you need, you know, this is not where you're supposed to be. You need to figure this thing out right? or start to progress towards something mm-hmm. and see what breaks your way. Mm-hmm. And so while I was working the graveyard shift there, if you ever work nights anywhere, you know, a lot, it's, it's a have. housing crew and a bunch of the big bosses aren't there. Yeah. And so uh, as, as I was working, running my machines, uh, if they were running fine, I'd open up my real estate book and I'd be studying for my real estate exam at night. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And so that's how I got my real estate license. And I did that for a few years. And then 2008 happened. The housing market crashed. Right. And, mm-hmm. But before then, I had already transitioned into getting my, my life insurance and, you know, retirement planning stuff dialed in. Mm-hmm. So to progress me out. Nice. So. Yeah. Because yeah. real estate was good. I mean, it's great money mm-hmm. when the market's hot. But mm-hmm. the minute it, you know, it shifts kind of like what today it's, it's not consistent. And so that's where he saw, um, actually, and we, 
Prior to that, we had lost everything in 2007, I was pretty impressive with, you know, with the investing because I had learned so much. I felt right. like, oh, my gosh, this time's going to pass us by. I got a little overzealous, and to make a long story short, we probably lost like $3, 4000000 million worth of stuff and, yeah. and whatnot. So we've had ups and downs yep. and, and learning. I think um, I made too much too fast. I didn't understand how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, now I'm okay making and taking things slower and, and you know, just, okay, hold on. Don't buy, just relax. Just, you've been here before. Yeah. Well, and you have to go through your first economy crash too. Sure. It just is part of uh, existing on yeah. this planet. And uh, that's what younger kids, I'm worried about them right now because they haven't lived through one. There are, they're all only kids. That's true. Their parents lived through it, but they didn't yeah. have, they don't have any, feel any of the effects of it. And true. so, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a rude awakening for, but we know it's, we've been through one. Yeah. Yep. We've been through a couple, a couple, two thousand, a couple, yeah. thousand and eight, you know, thousand and, and, and then and eight. You know, what's yeah. funny is that I'll be talking to somebody and I'm like, "Hey, man, do you remember in 08, bro?" And I'll be talking to him. They're like, Did you? "And this just shows you our age." And he's like, "Well, I think I was like eight years old." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> never mind." <laughs> so weird. Never mind. Forget it. I used to be the youngest person in the room everywhere I, know. I went. <laughs> when did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah. not true at all anymore. Yeah. As it turns <laughs> out, very true. Yeah, so it's good. It just gives you more life experience, and now, and now you you know what that's like. Yeah. I did too. I had a, I lost everything, yeah. bankruptcy, foreclosure, all of it. So, yeah. The cool part was is that as I was building the company up, um, she. I mean, obviously, when you're building up a company from scratch, I didn't know how to do it. I never went to school for it. Well, they don't teach you about this stuff in school, anyway. Right. No, I didn't. I didn't know what exactly what I was doing, and so I wasn't making very much. I actually wasn't making any money. I was probably losing money, and so. To kind of help me bring the family along, um, I worked at uh, UPS unloading the back of the trailers from three in the morning to nine in the morning because mm -hmm. that gave me the rest of my day to continue to build the business. Right. Wow. Right. And it wasn't. I wasn't making very much. But here's where you got to be a teamwork as a as a couple. I so people look today and they're like, well, you know, Adele is lucky that Ariel, you know, started it and blah blah blah. Yeah, but. If she didn't carry the Ford and hold down the Ford and, and, and make sure that, because she was making good money, not great money, but she was making really good money, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Working the surgery. If she didn't do that, this never would have been possible, mm -mm. right? Because I would have had to have gone back to, I don't have a degree. Mm -hmm. I would have had to have gone back to some kind of either like a car sales or gym sales or a factory or something. That would have taken all of your time. It would have taken yeah. all my time. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... That's where, like, I always, you know, people want to always give me credit. And, you know, hey, yes, I, I've, I've blood, sweat, and tears, no doubt. But if it wasn't for her holding down the fort at the beginning of it, we never would have had a chance to get here. Yeah. And Same. that's why we always tell the kids, like, you got to choose your partner wisely, right? Because you want somebody that's got your back, right? Because if you're trying to pursue something, you want somebody that's going to lift you up and bring the best out of you instead of being that naggy person you know, pulling them down, like stealing your dreams, essentially, you know, and so. And she's a woman, right? Let's like, let's just be real. Women drive, live on emotions. So when you're, when money's an issue. Yeah. Yeah. She had my back. Sometimes it was really far back. <laughs> <laughs> We're terrified. Yeah. We're terrified. Exactly. exactly. That's yes. exactly what it was. And, and, uh, you know, she was like my insulation from her, from other people. Mm -hmm that were close to our family that were like, what is your, what is he doing? Like I wasn't even part of, I wasn't even part of the family anymore. Like, you know, and so a lot of it was, you know, her just really trying to be insulation yeah. uh, to be like, you know, just, he says, you know, and she didn't, and honestly, I'm a, I'm a horrible, I was, I'm better now, but I was horrible communicating, communicating. back then. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I don't know. He says it's going to work. Yeah. Like he's doing something with insurance. <laughs> I don't know. Like he says, he says, trust me, like it's going to work. And I could, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that when I see things in my head, I, 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 I know I'm going to get it done. I just don't know the steps yet. But if I move forward with it, I'll, I'll eventually start to see the steps. And that's mm -hmm. what he would tell me. He's like, I just see things. I just see things ahead. Like, you just got to trust me. You mm -hmm. just got to trust me. So there's a lot of prayer, you know, mm -hmm. because yeah, I see sure. my bank account, I see him and I'm like, there's more going out. 
Then you get notices <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> so <sighs> I still yeah. had PTSD from everything we went through, you know, Absolutely. that I was like, I don't want to go through that. I don't want mm-hmm. anybody to go through yeah. to live that again. And Me so neither. it was like, okay, I got to just trust him. I just got to trust him, you mm-hmm. know, like, he, and he, he was changing, right? Because the personal mm-hmm. development aspect yeah. came in and he was developing. And so he developed as a, as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. a business owner, a leader, you know, so you see the growth and so it and was, she used to get so mad at me because, you know, <laughs> she she would be frustrated and she had every right to be. And she'd, get, she'd be mad at me. And I'd be like, honey, I'm not going to allow you to get me mad. <laughs> oh, she gets so mad. <laughs> I, could, I, I, I yeah. am in control of my emotions. I'm not going to allow you to get me mad because yeah. two of us Ooh. mad is not. Oh, that yeah. did not help. Yeah. yeah. But that's huge. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, as far as personal development, I mean, how hard is it is to separate your own emotions from your yeah. husband's or your partner's? Well, it's so I hard. I was in an yeah. environment, I was not in a healthy environment. Yeah. I was with people that were miserable at work, right? Oh. Even though it was a yeah. surgical she environment. Things, right? oh. Like, all the doctors were miserable. They were functioning alcoholics. Like, oh they God. were going through divorces. So, everybody had mm-hmm. drama, right? Mm-hmm. So, you're trying to stay focused, you you know, and then you try not to take that home. Mm-hmm. And then it was, I mean, even the kids are like, yeah, mom, you, you were really upset when you came home. And I was like, man, is this really healthy, yeah. you know, to, to be in? And so, I really couldn't be supportive in that respect, um, because I wasn't at the same mental state, right? My personal development was not there. Mm-hmm. It was zero. And I didn't she read. she had time. I mean, she was yeah. working. How, I was working you know, 12 hour shifts, 15 hours. Kids. She's coach. She was coaching yeah. this time too. So yeah. she really didn't have time to sit there and be like, all right, let me work on me. She was more like, okay, let me make sure this is done. Let me make sure yeah. the work is done. I don't. People are calling her from work. Hey, we need this. How, how's yeah. this going? How's, and then she's still a coach. Hey, I got practice at six. Right. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. it was a I lot. always tell my sisters with smaller kids, your whole life is determined by the ages of your children. For sure. Like, I have so much more time than you do. Like, Absolutely. Don't worry about how clean my house is because I, my youngest is 17. They don't, yeah. they're not even here. Not. <laughs> I don't even yeah. see them. They don't, yeah. there's no mess to clean up. Yes. It's, so stop judging your own yeah. situation. Yes. When you have children that are small, you're just. Expect that. Like, they're all, it's basically yes. survival mode for 100%. a lot of years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You just got to do what you got to do and get, yeah. and just, you know, do your yeah. best every day and pff, just give yourself some grace. So, yes, yeah. that's so true. Yeah. So true. So yeah, it was it was a big, big aspect of, you know, uh, supporting him. But then also um, he started the business with his friend. So prior to that, he did ACN, which is mm-hmm. like a telecommunication. I used to sell local long distance. Oh, okay. The first video phone before an iPhone. Residual. Ooh. I'd make a call, I'd get residual off the phone bill. Ooh, yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, we, mind, mind you, we had lost everything. We had yeah. one car. Um, that my parents gave us. And then um, he picked me up from work. Um, and then he proceeds to tell me, hey, I got something to tell you. And I was like, wait, what? What's going on now? You know? And then that's what? Like, I'm going to start a new business. Now, and yeah. I'm going to sell the other business. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's not going to do real estate. He's doing the insurance industry. And he's going to sell his telecommunication oh, business. And I was she like, was wait, what? I just stayed quiet. I just, I didn't even know how to respond. I was like, pissed. I'm like, no, I promise this is way better. So again, Uh, trust. (laughs) Oh, but I failed my license. Yes. Twice. Three times. Three times. Oh. And we had no money. He had to go to LA. Oh, you have to take it in LA. Doing it on like fumes. Yeah. Uh, or no online tests back then. No, nothing. No. Mm-hmm. So I had to go literally take it downtown, had to LA, downtown LA. Finally passed it the third time. I hate downtown. Cried LA. in the parking lot because I was like, "Holy cow!" Like finally got this damn thing done. Yeah. <laughs> so the pursuit of happiness with Will Smith. That yeah. moment when he like walking on the sidewalk and he's the- clapping. That's exactly how I felt. Yeah, I bet. yeah. I mean, I'm at boogers. I'm talking about everything. So, like, oh, yeah. What a beautiful day. Well, yeah. The reason why I started feeling that way was because I knew that was going to be the moment our life was going to change. Yeah. Like I was so clear that this business is where I was supposed to be at like the minute I got that stupid paper that said that I w- gave me the thumbs up like I just I don't know what it was I just knew mm-hmm. yeah like okay this, this is, is what it. I'm supposed to be doing and so you know like Adela was saying I started what year was that oh my gosh dude like, it was 2007 seven okay it was all like in the same time yeah. period like okay. losing everything then yeah. trying to s- gather money we even had Yard sales, like yeah, we had yard sales same. Sold money. my my same. wedding ring, my original wedding, wedding ring. You did. Sold it, yeah. Because yeah. like, we needed money to go to an event, and yeah. she, yep. you know, it's only 
thing of value that we really had. Mm -hmm. yeah. Besides the kids, but we, you know, we like them a lot. So <laughs> they we decided to keep them. Yeah, they're worth a lot. But as we it turns were, out, we were kind of like all in. Like this is going to work. We got to make it work. And so we we committed and we sold a lot of stuff in our in our home because awesome. We were we wanted to make it work. I love and that. So we knew we needed a sacrifice, and sacrifice had to be done. And we're like, okay got to pay the price and we're going to do it well and that's what i love because you know and andy Priscilla talks about this all the time you have to be an all-in yeah. all or nothing you have to you have to be willing to sacrifice everything everything and yeah. you did yeah you actually did yeah. yeah and that's where we keep like reminding ourselves is that no like we deserve it you know because we we did sacrifice mm -hmm. we did do a lot other people wouldn't we did do. have one car we did yeah, have we did nothing have i did sell my wedding ring <laughs> we did a lot like looking back i'm like oh my gosh i don't know that i would do this now but wow you know i mean we awesome. were like wanting a change we wanted to kind of create that different direction from our our families yep. right the traditional way of working for somebody for 30 40 years and kind of just settling yeah. and, and there's nothing wrong with that i mean those are some of our best clients mm -hmm. you know nothing wrong with that at all but mm -mm. i just you know i just wanted something different i just, yeah. i saw what was going on out there what was possible and believe it or not when i first met her i thought her parents were rich i was like dang they got a big house they live by the beach you know, her dad was probably making a hundred grand a year back in the eighties, which is mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. right? Um, and for me, you know, I'm first generation, so I grew up in an apartment. You know, and I don't think my parents actually bought a house until I was actually out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, working at a young age, I think I started working at twelve, and so you see a lot of that stuff, and you're like, oh, okay, that's probably not what I'm supposed to be doing. So when I met her parents, they were Hispanic, they did well, and it kind of so believe it or not, I always give her her parents credit too. That like, you know, you guys are the ones that made me kind of realize like, oh, okay, well, wait a more. minute, hold on, I can actually do this too. You could, yeah, yeah. You gave you Even that vision. Was it in yeah. business, her dad, you know, worked for a civil service in the military base over there in, in Oxnard. Mm. Um, but, you know, their, their life was different for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It was different. So you finally passed the test. Yeah. You cry your guts out like a little boy. <laughs> cry my guts out. And then what'd you do? So then, you know, at that time, you know, I, I was with this, my, I call it my practice company. I started there, you know, broke my teeth in there and started learning the business there, the lingo, the, the, you know, the basic stuff. And, and you I, had a partner or you didn't? No, I was just like a normal rep at okay. this point. But my buddy that got me started was a childhood friend that I grew up with, you know, spend the night at each other's home, mm -hmm. you know. He was educated. He was educated. This guy <laughs> went to USC, got his master's degree yeah. in engineering. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Yes. So he was, he was, that part, he's very intellectual. And right. I was just like, just show me what to do and I'm going to go get it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, we were at that other company for a while. I did really well. Not financially, but I, I was, you know, getting awards, but I wasn't making any money. So he's like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about branching off and starting our own company. And I'm like, well, I'm loyal, bro. So you tell me what to do and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. roll with you. We'll figure this thing out mm -hmm. together. Yeah. So we do that. We make things happen. And, uh, you know, I was this top, top guy, top sales guy. Money was just okay. It was not nearly enough, but it was okay. And I understood it. Hey, when you build a business, you got to sacrifice at the beginning. Even though it wasn't my business, I was his main guy. Make a long story short, uh, he tried to make it the same way for the company we had just left. And I'm like, no, nah, this is not what I want. Um, but what, one of the things I did learn from helping him build his company is I learned all the corporate stuff on the back end, the right. contracting, the paperwork, the logistics, the legalities of having a, having that type of a company. So I learned that. Uh, but my biggest downfall was that I am not organized. Mm. And so after being with them for a few years and Adela coming alongside of me, you know, just as a supportive spouse, she's like, well, how come you don't do this? I'm like, honey, trust me, I've tried. If it's not his idea, it's not a good idea. Mm. And so basically once Adela saw what I was saying, and then she went down to this event in L.A., had her feeling of like, this is not where I'm supposed to be. She, and I'll, let, I'll, let her, I'll, let, I'll let her tell that story. <laughs> she came on board full time with me. And then she was, I mean, I don't want to sound like a, like a typical cliche. She was everything I am not. So she was organized. She was structured. Her computer screen is clear. My has <laughs> things everywhere, right? My desk has stuff everywhere. Her desk tabs. is very organized. <laughs> right. But, but I am very action. I can go out there. Mm -hmm. I can, I'm, I'm very good with people. I can, I can sell, I can show value. Yep. I can build a business. Like I can talk to anybody. You have to have both. Yeah. And so, man, when she came Perfect board, compliment. our yeah. business just took off. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Yeah, but I'll let her. I mean, she. I'll let her tell you how. Yeah. She, she left nursing. How that no, happened so, for you? So, gosh, let me see. 2015, like 14, 15. 15. Yeah, and like I shared, you know, I was in a in an area that wasn't healthy. You mm-hmm. know, so I was already losing my hair. I was getting bullied at work. Oh. Um, had already gone through all of that with management. You know, all these different things. So mm. I was like, this is not going anywhere. Mm-mm. So just by happen chance, his friend had two extra tickets to go to a Bob Proctor event in L.A. in LAX, and so he's like, can you get the day off? I'm like, I don't know. Let me go beg because my friend was now the director, and so I begged her. She's like, yes, go. I'll make it happen. Have the day off. So we went, and I, I don't know if you've listened to Bob Proctor. Mm-hmm. He's been passed since, but um, I just felt like he was the wise grandfather talking mm-hmm. to you, like, you know, Karen, mm-hmm. this is what you really need to do. Mm-hmm. So I felt like I had that, like, aha moment. Della, like, this is not what you, you are so much bigger than what mm. you're settling for. And so I remember turning the table, and I was like, I'm quitting. I'm done. I'm, I'm going to turn in my resignation. Wow. And he's like, do it <laughs> and oh, I was like, awesome oh, seriously i was just joking are you sure <laughs> oh it's so, so cool yeah so i was like okay and thankfully we were at a position where you know he was starting to make money you know and so um yeah and it was just it was like a great feeling to put in my resignation and then that monday came had it written up i quiet for 24 hours because mm-hmm. i was like i don't know Scary. can i can i not you know mm-hmm. i worked for somebody since i was 16 i never really worked for myself so um, scary. that was a scary moment. And so, um, I got to work. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And my boss wasn't there. And I was like, crap, this is so unprofessional. I'm gonna have to email a resignation letter. Mm-hmm. So I emailed a resignation letter and my, my, the CEO called me within like two, three minutes of me uploading it. And so I was like, oh my gosh, why is Michael calling me? And so then I, I picked up the phone. I'm like, hey, Michael, what's going on? And he's like, hey, so I'm looking at this resignation letter here. You know, what's going on? And he, I was like, uh, you know, I just realized that I, I just need to do this for myself and stuff. He's like, well, we'll create a directorship. We'll, we'll throw you, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more. Oh, like, come on. And I was like, you should have done this before. And I, believe me, quickly I called him. I was like, what do you think? What do you think? And he's like, no, you'd like, it's not going to change. Right. And I was like, you're right. You're right. Still going to be miserable. Yeah. So I called him up and I said, you know what? Look, I, I'm and flattered. I was scared a little bit too. Right. Because she's bringing in a steady paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So insurance benefits, right? Like, insurance, oh medical insurance <laughs> yeah. for the kids. So in my mind, I know where we're going and I know how amazing she would be. And that's why I said yes. Cause I'm like, she deserves, you know, better. But the other part of me is like, damn, we're losing that paycheck. <laughs> I that's know steady. that's the hardest thing to do is take yeah. that leap. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was just like, you know what? I, I have to just do this for myself. And so he's like, wow, I'm, I'm, this is like the first I've ever heard somebody saying thank you, but no, thank you. And so he's like, best of luck, you know? And it was awesome. It was a great feeling. I had just got employee of the year. They gave me like a thousand dollar check and a, and a trophy and mm-hmm. I turned in my resignation, but, um, yeah, it was great. I mean, I was with his, his friend, um, and noticed there was a lot of kind of uphill battles. And so then that's when I was like, what are we doing? Why are we with him? Like we mm-hmm. do all the work. Mm-hmm. And so that's when I, it was actually from Phoenix. We came to an event in Phoenix, um, to help establish a, an office here mm. for him. For him. And for him, for his company. Mm. And so he was in Cabo and he was supposed to be here with us. And so we were like, hey, so where are you? He's like, oh, well, it was a last minute trip. We decided to go to Cabo. I'm like, what are we doing? Why are we Why building are we his doing business? This for we're his spending legacy. all our money for him. Yeah. Like, no. where there's no benefit. So literally on our way home, driving, you know, eight hours back to California, we start writing like, what, what do we like? What do we don't like of the company? What do we want to keep? What do we don't want to keep? And literally everything that was bad, we just tour of the page and we're like that's it we're gonna establish our company and then that's when we decided july 3rd uh, 2027 2017 Mm. is when we um were officially with the state of california Uh, right financial was born awesome yeah Yeah. so So cool it was it was a big experience you know i mean it's one of those like you fail forward right there wasn't every there was setbacks, but you fell forward because you learn from those lessons. And so then we just apply them going forward. And so it's been a great experience. You know, um, there was challenges, obviously working together because mm-hmm. we had one little office and one desk. I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I need my own space. Please and- have a few <laughs> feet at least away yes. from you. <laughs> yeah. So we got two desks in one, one little office and then we started expanding and, and awesome. then, um, 
yeah, we ended up getting a bigger location and, Mm -hmm. um, he took, so it took us about 30, 30 to 45 days to kind of figure out our roles, Mm -hmm. you know, because I expected him to be like me and he kind of expected me to be like him Mm -hmm. and it wasn't, we were just clashing, you Mm -hmm. know? And so people would tell us like, how do you work with your spouse? Like, Mm -hmm. this is crazy. But we figured out like his strengths and what my strengths are. And that's kind of where we've grown from there, you know? And I mean, I mean, it's amazing. It, it's, it's like, I literally get to hang out with her all the time. We, we, we go golfing all the time. She could be go to sporting events all the time. We travel the world together all the time mm-hmm. for business and for fun. Uh, but this isn't a fairy tale, Mm-mm. right? We're married. <laughs> this is We're real people. life. Mm-hmm. So there are some times where I get to see further. I see things further down the road. Yeah. And she sees things today. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's some times where I'm like, if I recognize something, I'll bring it up to her. And she gets a little rough, like a little (laughs) like, (laughs) no. And I'm like, just honey, like I'm just, I guess. So to a normal person, I can be like, hey, man, you need to do this because this is the reason why it's happening. You need to fix that. Mm -hmm. But it's your wife. Hey, honey, (laughs) you may want (laughs) to. So there is, there's, there's times where we bunt heads and I was like, really, you know, but you know, we, I tend to take a step back cause I'm, I'm emotional. I'm more of a woman and I'm at a different level on the personal development. So I didn't read before. So that was a big, yeah. big growth of learning how to mm. read and personally develop mm. and stuff. And so I'm just at a different level than he is. So he does see things way beyond than I do. Um, so I feel like I'm not just now, I'm like a week. <laughs> I can but without you, it'd probably be a couple of years back taxes. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Really, all the stuff that needs to be done today, you make yes. sure it gets done. But they counterbalance. You need both. That. That's yes. exactly you it. You have to have both. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. I need that counterbalance for yeah. sure. I'm just kidding. But like to your point, like the paperwork would be all messed up. Yeah. You'd be behind yes. on shit. Oh, yeah. Because yes. it's oh, not your yeah. strength. And it's I get it. Yes. I know. Yeah. I have to hire people to do the stuff yeah. that I'm not good at. Yes. yes. And no. that's, that's part of it too, is just knowing what your strengths are, yep. you know, instead of trying to be everything when you know you're not, it's okay. And and I've accepted that. Like he's more of the go getter, you know, he loves to be on camera people. Yeah. and, you know, I'm, I'm not there, you know, I'm not there yet. So he's okay with that. And I'm okay with that, you know? So no, I think you're great on process, camera and you're great you know? with people. <laughs> it's a process, but no. I love, I love what we do. I, I love you know, being able to serve people. Yeah. I think that's the bigger joy in life is, yeah. you know, like that's why I pursued nursing was helping people to serve people. Yep. And so applying those same skills into this area and to see somebody get to a point in their career where they're like, I'm ready to retire and having everything in place. Mm. Like there's this, this sense of joy on their face. That's it's, it's well, so true amazing. Story. We had this grown man talk about strong guy. Yeah. Grown man. Had just battled cancer like 10 years prior. Mm. Um, you know, I think he was divorced as well. So he had gone through that as well. And we were at our office in California and we're sitting down. We're going through his stuff. And, man, the dude started tearing up. And he was like, are you trying to tell me that I, I can actually I can retire? <laughs> and he starts bawling. Oh, Yeah. So you're like, wow. I'm like, Man, I, I, I did not expect that from him. But, man, that just shows you how big of a deal what we do is for it's people. It's powerful. It's powerful. You know, or even being on the other side, right? Because we do life insurance and then being able to, to help a family go through the worst time in their life and to yeah. facilitate that for them. Like yeah. it's, it's such a joy being able to, to be that, that rock for them, yeah. you know, and having that guidance and stuff. And, and we've helped people that they're not necessarily our clients, but they're like, Hey, you do insurance. Can yeah. you help us? Like yeah. my dad, we just lost my dad. Like, I don't, my I don't mom. know how to do this. I don't know how to call who to call. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, bring it in. We'll help you. Out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that, that to me, that's like everything being able to help and serve people, you know, and, and, um, yeah, I'll give them fun. that peace of mind too. Oh, absolutely. You know what it's like to not be sure if you're going to have enough money at the end of the yeah. month and if you're going to be able to pay your bills and then to be able to th- just sleep at night going, yes. no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. Yes. If I get hurt or if I get mm-hmm. sick or if I, you know, die, my yes. family will be okay. Yeah. And it's, there's so much peace in that. Absolutely. Well, money's a funny thing because just because a person does really well at earning money doesn't mean they're good with money. That's true. Right. Right. And I, I used to think when I was younger, like, oh, so-and-so does well. He must be amazing with his money. But over the years, as I've gone just through clients, and I've helped out thousands of clients, 
um, you start to realize like, man, I want to say like 90, I probably cut myself short. 93% of most people are very average, limited, or don't know what's going on with their money. Mm -mm. Um, and, and some of these guys are earning over seven figures. Hmm. Uh, and mm -hmm. so they're really good at making it. Mm -hmm. They're just not sure what to do with it when they have it. For long term, yeah. Yeah, the long term stuff. Yeah. So uh, that's for me, it's just, you know, it was a real eye opener for me. And it made me realize, like, we can help out anybody. I don't care how much you make. I don't care how much you earn. I don't care what your status is. Right. Uh, there are things in place that we can do to make sure that, you know, you're going to be taken care of. And it's going to be, um, it's going to help you hit your goals as far as whatever they are, when you want to retire, how you want it to look, how you want taxes to play out, what the plan is behind that. Right. right. So and any age, because yeah. John's 67 almost, and we still, you know, we still did, uh, took out insurance policy and then also a, what is it called? I don't know. An IRA. An yeah, IRA. IRA, yeah. So yeah. I, you know, we just, we, you know, we just started, started these. That. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't matter how old you are. You, yeah. It's never too late nope. to, to set up some things Absolutely. to help you, you know, for your future. Yeah. So I would say, I know you said everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's situation is different. Their age is different. Their income is different. Their goals are different. Right. But in general, uh, could you give us some things that everybody could do to help them help their financial situation, help them feel secure? Well, Number one. Is there is, anything that's like one, top three or something? Well, well, it depends on what type of household you're talking about. If you're talking yeah. about the average basic household, number one, you got to have a budget. Yeah. yeah. Right. You got to know where your money's going. You got to know what's coming in versus what's going out. And so that's, that's like a very vanilla answer is you got to have a budget. Mm -hmm. right? Just the awareness of how, yes. what you're spending it on. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people, again, that they're, you know, a husband makes 60,000 a year, wife makes, you know, 70, 80,000 a year, and they're making, you know, 130, 150 grand a year mm -hmm. together. That's pretty good, mm -hmm. but they are living check to check. Right. Yeah. Right. Which, yeah. you know, I've been there, done that. It's easy. Same. To do. It's easy so to easy. Do. You don't even realize. Get it more is. toys. It's just yeah. 200 bucks a month more. Or Who cares? $500 yeah. on Starbucks a month. Yeah. 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 I probably <laughs> used to too. Yeah. How so much you got? I didn't care. Didn't, I didn't track it. You didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. They didn't care to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Uh, the other one is life insurance. You got to have life insurance yeah. uh, outside of your employer. Yes. The reason why that's important is because now, the age we're living in now, every person switches jobs every five to seven years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I don't care if you're in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. We switch jobs every five to seven years. The problem is you don't know if your next employer is going to offer you life insurance or not. So then that's what do you got to do? You got to go get life insurance outside of your employer, but you're older then. now. Right. It'll be more expensive. If you're insurable, yes. if you haven't had a health issue yet. Right? right. So that's that's another one is making sure you got life insurance. And then number number three, the basics is now obviously retirement can go to a bunch of different avenues, but you gotta be saving somewhere for retirement. Yeah. Because the bottom line is if people have this fairy tale that the government has this amazing safety net that's gonna make sure we are all gonna be okay and it's not. Yeah. People actually believe that still, yes. oh my even God. today. They, be they believe yes. in the Easter Bunny still. Yes. So, oh, yeah. Gosh, yeah. see, I thought at least that belief would be eroded by no. now. No, they're yeah. a complete it's shit complete show, and you have no idea so what's going to happen. Conversation yep. that typically happens. Hey, Karen, you got a four hundred one k? Oh yeah, I got a four hundred one k to my employer. Okay, great. Well, how much are you putting in? Uh, they don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. I have to get back to them then. Okay. Well, does your employer match? Yeah, I think so. They don't know how much. Okay. Not. Well, um, how is it performing? I haven't even looked at it. Yeah. That is a very <laughs> typical yes. conversation that we have with. I think it's like 90% of people that we meet have, have no clue. No clue. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, you should have a budget. Yep, you should have life insurance. And, and you should be and saving. you should always be saving. Is there different plans and better yes. ways, tax-free? Yep. Yes. But the simple of the simple is if you have access to a 401k, put money in it. And if your employer matches, take advantage of the match. Yep. Yeah. Now, when it comes to being personalized, yeah, that's what Arrive Financial does. We sit down with you and we right. start to figure out what's your retirement horizon? What's your budget look like today? What do you currently got? What do you currently have in force today? Do you have any life insurance today? Do you have any IRA, Roth IRAs, annuities out there that we, you know, we need to take a look at? Do you have any managed accounts we need to take a look at? Right. All these different things is what we can do now to customize the plan 
But what I shared with you was just like the very basic. Right. Because yeah. you got to look at the outcome, right? Because when you're retired, what are the things that concern you, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure your income, you're not going to run out of money. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go back to work when you're 80. Mm -hmm. uh, healthcare. So whether it's Medicare, yeah. but what about the long-term care? Mm -hmm. What if you, you need care to take well, care of you? You might need a nursing home. You need or a nursing a, home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, we were here in Gilbert and there's nursing homes all, <laughs> all around us. Assisted living, dementia. independent living, dementia, you don't know. Parkinson's, cognitive. You have no idea. You just got to be no ready. Idea. So yeah. preparing for that and then um, having that, the life insurance. So those are the mm -hmm. three things that people are concerned about in retirement is like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I don't want to be a burden in my family. I was so just going to say that. Let me, let me just have the basic. Let me even do a 10,000 or a 15,000. Mm -hmm. A basic in California is like $14,000 just for basic service. You, you mean know? to live in one of those assisted no, living? No, no, not even. That's What's, just to bury you. <laughs> just oh. a funeral expense. Assisted living can go. Assisted it's living. It's like 10 yeah. grand a month yeah, or something. Yeah, what yeah, if, yeah, depending yeah. on I don't want my kids more. to if have to do that. If it's a state-run one, well, then, you know, you're, you're, you're giving your hands to the state to determine the care and that's and all terrifying. That. Well, yeah. that's all part of retirement, right? Because people mm -hmm. don't realize that you can have a million dollars in your 401k, right. but it takes one incident with an illness that wipes it that wipes out. It wipes it out. Mm. Or let's talk about what's going on today. People don't realize that when you're, when you're saving for retirement, there's times of offense and there's times of defense. Right. Well, guess where we're in right now? Your defense is going to be your best offense right now. Mm -hmm. right? right. And it may be this way for the next 10, 15 years. Who knows? We don't know. Nobody knows. Okay. Um, so that's another one. It, it, it's, that's great when you go into retirement, but do you think there was people that were trying to retire around 2008? Yeah, you sure were. Yeah, the market. Didn't you lost, think they the, did? The average four hundred one k lost thirty eight and a half percent. Yeah. So what if you? What if that was all you had, and you're planning for well, retirement? Yeah. yeah. You're gonna hang it up. The market crashed, and now you're still working to make back what you lost. You had to. Yeah, you never know. Are you still telling? Is it the best thing to do? Is try to max it out still? Even like today, try to put the maximum amount if you can. Yes. And here's the reason why is because if you're, if you're needing to max out your 401k, you probably do pretty well financially. So you probably are, are if you don't max it out, you're going to have to pay uncle Sam. Right. Okay. Right. You got to get pay it somewhere. Okay. So if you're doing well financially and you're, if you're even having the thoughts of maxing out a 401k, yeah. you're doing that because it. it's going to help you on your taxes. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So what we usually advise right now today in today's market is if that's something you want to do, still contribute to your 401k because if not, you're going to have to pay Uncle Sam at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But maybe call your administrator, whoever you're at work has, they're running their 401k program and put it into like a money market account because mm -hmm. right? you're going to gain 1%, but it's out of the market. Right. Right. And you can still contribute to it to get the tax deduction. Right. Got it. So you can at least... Just for see now. what's going on. Until we see what the stock market does. I was just right. reading headlines where Iran, China... Saudi Arabia, uh, Russia, we're pulling away from the U.S. dollar. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's, I don't know if you guys understand, but that's a whole nother ball of wax that's going to happen. And that value of the dollar, I mean. Yeah. Very volatile. Because when we print money, right, that's dead, right? And how do we sell the note? And if mm -hmm. no one's buying the note, then that causes yeah, the problem. Yeah, so the there's a whole problem. lot of things right now where that's why I was saying in today's world, the world we live in, your defense may probably be your best offense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And tell them about universal life because that was something new I had not yeah. heard of. So, and why that's so, that's a really good idea right so now. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, there's the good and the bad about the internet is information. Yes. <laughs> right. You can look for so all true. the horrible stuff and you're going to find horrible stuff. Yeah. You can talk about marriage, right? You can look about all the bad reasons why to be married. Sure. Yep. And you can find it on the internet. You of course look you can. You want to look at the being married, you're going to find it on the internet. You See? can also find a lot of couples in real life who have that horrible marriage. If yes. that's what your what bias you is, exactly. if that's what you're constantly searching for. That's true. So, so yes. true. if you come at finances or insurance with a I'm scared Open. it's terrible yeah. I don't it's I don't want somebody controlling my money or you yeah. know no I, I want to online I want to keep it under my mattress, mattress. or <laughs> it's safer in my house yes. and a safe whatever if you yeah. come at that that mindset then you're going to find a different ex result so let me sure. tell you let me talk to you from a standpoint of ownership because this is what Adele and I, this is one of our we do a lot of the things but this is what I want the foundation of 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 our long-term play is right so Adele and I overfund what we call an index universal life policy. It's the 7702 IRS code. Um, what this policy is, yes, it's a life insurance policy, but behind that, it allows us to build and grow our money tax-free 
that is is uh, untouchable by anybody else out there. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And so this one product allows us to grow, build our assets tax free, and they're accessible. And when I take that money out, I don't have to file taxes on it either. Right. Yeah. So it's huge. But the problem is, is that a lot of times people, this isn't commonplace. So you're not going to hear about an index universal life at your employer. Right. right. And so when we talk to people about this, they're like, uh, I've never heard of that before. And I'm like, well, yeah, because you probably never talked to anybody like us. Mm-mm. Right. So you're not going to hear of it. It's kind of like when John's in the automotive industry. I know John knows things about vehicles that. I'm on the outside. I have no idea what's, but mm-hmm. he can tell you this is coming. This is coming. The industry, coming, the trends, the everything. Yep. Right. What's well, the same thing in our industry? Absolutely. Wealthy people have been funding these types of accounts for decades. Hundreds of years. Yeah. Right. Hundreds decades. Of, uh, right. They've only been around for like 30, 40 years. Four, yeah. These types of exactly. They, yeah. They've, yeah. But decades, they've been funding these types of policies. The average person has never had access to them. They don't understand how they work. They don't understand their, their, their place in your retirement. Now, we do other things for that reason. We have IRA accounts, SEP IRA accounts, uh, because we are, we're business owners. And yeah, mm-hmm. that money's tax deferred. We've got to pay money uh, taxes on that money when we go to withdraw it. Right. But a majority of our assets are growing tax-free. So that way, when I go to retire, I don't have to worry about how high the tax rates are going to be when I'm 60. Got it. Yeah. Right? Because I don't know. But I, know. I, I have to say this. I would bet everything I had that they're going to be higher. I know. Yeah. Right? Unfortunately, but that's probably true. I just don't know how high they're going to be. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if I got all my money tied up in these tax deferred accounts, where I've deferred taxes my entire life, and now when I'm ready to retire, I got to pull, pull from them. Well, now I don't know how much is actually going to stay in my pocket. Right. Yeah. Good and point. so for me, I love an index universal life account because I call it a Roth IRA on steroids. Mm-hmm. Why a Roth IRA? You max out at six grand a year, depending on your age. Mm-hmm. An IUL, index universal life. I mean, we have some policies that some plans where your max is over hundred thousand a year that you can put in there tax free. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. So if you got a guy that's got you know good amount of money and he's like, man, I want to dump fifty grand a year into this thing. Mm-hmm. As long as that policy fits that amount of money. Mm-hmm. He can grow that money. Interest is tax free. The money is tax free. He can take it out tax free. You're like your own bank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, and it's a life insurance on top of it. And it's too, a life so. insurance. So you're like, you know what? Here's this. Here's I, I had the great explanation like this. Sometimes people are like, well, what do I want? Why do I want to pay for a life insurance when I can just put that money in the bank? Mm-hmm. Like, man, you're so smart. You should do that. Mm-hmm. Have you done it yet? No. <laughs> do you think you're really going to develop the habit to start doing it now? <laughs> right. That's one thing. The other part of it is like, let's just say you've been putting into your, 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 uh, your savings account for the last three years and you've got $3,000 in there. Mm -hmm. If you just use that same amount of money and you funded an IUL policy that gave you a half a million dollar life insurance and you passed away in three years, what's going to help your family out more? That three grand you got in your savings account or that half a million dollars is going to come to your wife and your kids. So true. Mm -hmm. Same money. Yep. It just depends on how you look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they have the living benefits attached to it. So that's a big one because, again, filling, you know, um, people that have gone through cancer, right? That's mm-hmm. a big one right now that we've had to file claims for cancer. Mm. And so being able to say, hey, that half a million dollar policy, now you're eligible to, for 250000 of it. Yes, today. it mm-hmm. decreases your benefit, 250000 but now you have $250,000 cash in your bank to pay, to pay for the for- astronomical yeah. yes. medical or you bills get experimental coverage at your health yeah. you could go try something you yeah. could go yeah i mean yeah. You can you use that money in another country does it matter what you spend I mean, it on they use u.s dollars so when we go to france we were able to you know that money's going to be in your account it's going to you your just bank it's, you they write supply. you a check yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah you're getting cash in your bank account yeah. that's cool you can take it to vegas if you want mm. yeah That'd be and fun. so yeah. it's it's pretty remarkable to be able to have and that. We have of mind. live stories with clients that have had to utilize it for cancer and other things of illnesses where yeah. they've gotten checks in the mail and they're still alive today. This yeah. was years ago. Oh, mm-hmm. and they're like, so man, cool. I got that eighty five grand and it was amazing. Like yeah. our yeah. one of our, our agents in Texas, he's he's got a check for 180,000. 180, yeah. My good friends 
teenage daughter died after years and years and years of finance. She had a half a million dollars in bills to pay. Uh, she did not have this insurance. She yeah. did not have any policy. She didn't have anything. Oh and she was so sick for so long and they tried everything, which yeah. costs so, so much money, much money, half a million dollars. And that's the number one reason bankruptcy is medical bills. Oh, medical bills oh, are so I didn't astronomical. Know that. And so just having that peace of mind of not having yeah. to dig into your retirement account. Yeah. Cause we met people on the other side that don't have it and yeah. have, eliminated their 401k yeah. siphoned it because and, of yeah. and penalties. And they may be they may be whatever illness they have but now they're older and they have no retirement. Yeah. Right. And they can't be insured because they're uninsurable. They just, yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah, so we look My at it that hubby. way but yeah. The biggest <laughs> no one will insure him. <laughs> he just had an open heart surgery. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so we look at it as as a as a pivotal aspect or foundation piece of retirement mm-hmm. because the biggest thing, right? Income planning, mm-hmm. um, the medical expenses and, um, taxes. and taxes, mm. right? So it covers those three areas in the retirement aspect. Fast forward. Love so it. you have tax-free income. It has living benefits. So if you get sick, that long-term care kind of component, and then it has a death benefit. So you can fund these, you know, mm-hmm. however you want. But the biggest thing when you see on, on, on Google and things like that, the negative is you don't fund it properly. It's Got set it. up you know, to where you're, you're paying for an expensive policy. Life insurance. That is, okay. what, is it really doing what it's supposed to do on the back? Got end? it. Right. It's like somebody promising you a, a Dodge charger with a Hemi in it and you get it and it's less than the base model engine, but the outside looks great. Right. Yeah. And so unfortunately in our industry, there's a lot of rookies out there, a lot of amateurs that are, are in, in the industry for six months and they're gone. Yeah. And they're going around selling these policies, not setting them up I mean, because you can really mess somebody up Mm. yeah not setting them up the right way and that's that's a lot of what you see online yeah Yeah. oh awesome thank you so much is there anything else you wanted to say before we wrap up any other advice anything else tell us how they can find you to get financial advice get them set up (laughs) that's it i guess we should probably yeah (laughs) so our website is www.arrive a-r-r-i-v-e arrive financial services with the s at the end dot com um you can go to our youtube channel yeah arrive Arrive financial Financial. yeah um you can look me up on so much good information look up lots of videos on on instagram facebook tiktok tiktok not your average financial guy uh, not your average financial guy on Instagram. Awesome. Uh, so many different ways to reach out to us. Um, yeah. Or you can call our office, 661-636-6862. And our office manager will pick up and put you on schedule so we can yeah. at least uh, yeah. give you some uh, information. Give you some information. Yeah. And, yeah. and just so you know, our first appointment is really just information. Sit down with you. Where you at? Because we honestly don't know how to help you until we figure out where you're at. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the thing. best part. Yeah. It's not like there's no hard sell BS, you no. know, there's none of that. You can trust them. We trust them with our finances and, um, they really helped us a lot. So, um, thank you so much. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Pleasure. Yeah, this is awesome. our so, thank so you. fun listeners an and watchers. Thank you so much for tuning in. So appreciate you. God bless you. And just remember that you can create the life that you want. It just takes one day at a time. God bless you.